Okay, ready? Welcome back! Welcome back to our channel. We're gonna do some fun yeah, we're recipes gonna, today. Yep, yeah. we're gonna do something different than pizza cupcakes because <laughs> because something is on the way, but it's not here. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a quick snack yeah. that's fun to do with kids or just fun in general. Yep. The first recipe is called Fruity Cereal Yogurt Bark. And it's very easy to make as it's only two ingredients. Easy to make with your kids or just on your own. I guess it's on the more healthier side because it's Greek yogurt, but we'll find out. The ingredients you need are your fruity cereal of choice, your Greek yogurt of choice, and the recipe calls for parchment paper. We don't have that, so we have the nonstick um, aluminum foil and that works just fine too. So when you start, you want to grab your 9x9 nine nine baking sheet. And like I said, I don't have parchment paper, so I'm using aluminum foil. The aluminum foil is really nice, um, the non-stick version, because literally nothing sticks to it, which is really cool. You want to take your Greek yogurt. Again, you can use whatever kind you like. And you pretty much want to dump the whole tub out for the most part and put a nice layer down on your sheet. The recipe says about three eighths of an inch. That way when you make the bark, it doesn't all shatter. It actually makes nice bark pieces. So that's what we're doing right here. We're spreading it all out. So once you're done spreading everything all out, you grab your fruity cereal and just add it to the top. Makes it look so pretty, but also it looks really, really good. I'm really excited to try this. So you spread it all to the top, you push it into the yogurt just so that it sticks really, really well, and then you're pretty much done. Once you're done putting your bark together, it should look like this. And then the last step is to take this and put this in the freezer and then freeze. So we will be back tomorrow to test this all out. Yep. And uh, we have school to be made it. Yep, it's in the next day with yeah, our it's yogurt. Day two. It's day two of our yogurt bark. So I just pulled this out of the freezer and I can easily pull it out, which is really nice. So let me pull back this. Come on, non-stick, don't fail me. Bless you. You don't want to fail it. And then, oh cool. So here we go. Oh no! That's yeah, some of it broke. So, there we go. You just break it into pieces and then you just eat it. Oh. Can I have go ahead and try it. Yeah, because I'm going to break it up and put it in the bags. Okay. Here, what piece? You want to try this, this piece? This is like a school snack. Yeah, would you like to try this? Like you said, it's the, um... Here. Here, Watch the taste. It's day two. Yep, it's already day two. Mmm. Yep, it's not day one anymore. It's day two for us to eat. Try it. Why it. It's like ice cream. Ooh, it is like ice cream. Ah, oh, it's cold. Can I'm... you give me a plate? I like it. Once you're done making your yogurt bark, you can break it up into small pieces and store it inside of a freezer bag. That way, anytime you have a sweet craving, you can just go grab this easily out of the freezer. It was a very easy recipe and, um, you know, really easy to put together as well. And it tastes delicious. So we highly recommend this. 
Also, I recorded some um, moments from Penny soccer game tonight, so I'm gonna insert some of that right here. Back, RJ. Back up. This morning we're gonna put together a crock pot recipe. Um, today's a school day. It's in the middle yeah. of the week, so you yeah, know. Yes, my school day and my sister's school day. She's yep. already at. She's her already school. there. Yep, we already dropped Penny off this morning, so we're getting ready to take Lynn to school. And so, before that, I wanted. Yeah, to... I'm in first grade. Yes. So he's in first grade. He's very excited. Um, but. I'm going to put together a crock pot recipe because one, it's fall, so crock pot is just always creates a nice, nice and cozy atmosphere, which I love. Um, but also, Penny has a soccer game tonight, so this makes yes. dinner very easy. Yeah, so we're, so we're, we're going to eat go. the Fitty Sam Yogurt Park is in the freezer, so we're, after Penny's soccer game, we're going to test it out. We're gonna do that tonight after Penny's soccer game. And then now we're getting ready to put together the um, chicken pot pie soup. So I'm very excited. So let me show the ingredients with you. Okay, so ingredients that you'll need are chicken breasts. We'll need one and a half boneless chicken breasts. I have not taken them out yet, but I will be taking them from this pack. You also need a can of corn and a can of sweet peas. Yeah. What's and this? and an onion. An onion, and what's that? Uh, you need carrots. Carrots. You need minced garlic. Yep. You also need a bay leaf, salt and pepper, and then anytime I do anything chicken soup related, I like to add Mrs. Dash. Um, I don't have the table blend, but that's usually what I go for, but today I have the original. I think it just makes everything taste really, really good. Yeah. So this is a slow cooker chicken pot pie recipe. So a chicken pot pie normally has a crust. So I'm gonna share with you, there is a biscuit topping. So you do need a 16 ounce can of biscuits. Um, I have crescent rolls, so that's yeah, what we're gonna use today. I love crescent rolls. You also need some shredded cheese and an egg. We'll go through everything that needs to be done in order for the biscuit topping yeah. later and on. We we did crescent rolls for the pizza cupcakes for our first video, right? Uh, yes, so they're a huge fan of the pizza cupcakes. We had yeah. to buy more ingredients so that we could make more. Yes. All right, so let's put this together. Say bye, Lynn, because we're getting ready to go to school. Okay, bye, YouTube. <laughs> Full disclaimer, you're gonna see a few different ingredients in here that I forgot to show in the ingredients list. That's because I was rushing. And so I'm sure many people can relate just being a very busy parent, trying to get everything squeezed into a short amount of time. So you're gonna see flour and chicken stock in here. Those are things that I forgot to add. I can say the recipe says to just throw the flour on top. And after I did that, I thought mm, I should have mixed the flour into the stock and stirred it up before putting it in. However, at the very end, it actually worked out really well. So stay tuned.
Okay, just checking in. We're about at the like four or five hour mark now and everything's looking good. The flower's dissolving, which is good. I thought about actually whisking the flour and the broth together before I threw it in, but it looks like the chicken is coming along just fine. So I'll check back in at the seven hour mark when we add all of the additional ingredients.
How's it taste? That's, good. That, that is true. Really good. You like the croissant? Okay, taste the food. Right. Let me know how it tastes. Really Mississippi chicken. <laughs> Ready? Mm hmm. It's hot. Alright, blow on it. How are you doing? Good. How's it taste? Yeah. What about the um the chicken pot pie part? You yeah. like it? I'm bringing you the part to uh, eat it. Is it good? Is it good? Is it just hot? Good. Good? Are you sure? Delicious. Do it again. <laughs> this means okay. Okay, so of course I had to sit down and try it as well. Um, I would have <laughs> shared my audio, but Penny was playing with the tripod, and so you can hear that throughout the whole the clicking throughout the whole video. So, um, so yeah, but I tried it. It was so good. It was very hearty. It was one of those just like warms your soul type of dinners. So highly recommend, very easy to make. So you should definitely try it. And so with this recipe and all of the rest of the recipes, I'm gonna put the um, recipes down in the description box down below so that you can access them and make them on your own as well. Bye YouTube. Can I do something? Hey guys, we're on to day three. And so we're gonna do one more crock pot recipe. We're gonna do a ravioli casserole. And so I'm really excited. I haven't tried this before. So we get to do this together. Um, we're gonna start off on the stove top and then we're gonna kind of like merge everything to the crock pot. So it's not a dump and go, but um, it still ends up in the crock pot. So here are all of the ingredients. Okay, so you're gonna start off putting your ground meat in the frying pan. The recipe says ground beef. I always have ground turkey, so that's what I'm gonna throw in. And then you're gonna put in your garlic and onion as well. I always like to season as I go, whether the recipe says throw things in the end or, or not. That way I feel like everything gets seasoned and not just a little bit gets seasoned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ground the ground turkey up, brown it up. I'm gonna cut up my onion and then add in my garlic all in the frying pan and then we're gonna transition it over to the crock pot. The recipe also calls for a few cloves of garlic. My family really likes garlic, so I never just measure it out. I kind of just give a nice healthy tablespoon of garlic, throw it in. 
works for me, but you do what works best for you and your family. How come you're home early? What? How come you're home early? Um, I walked. No, you didn't. <laughs> School let out two hours early today, so yeah. Lynn's home a little bit so, early. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the ground beef and transition it over to the crock pot. And YouTube, if you like breakfast sandwich, like and subscribe. <laughs> and comment. <laughs> Put down in the comments, what's your favorite breakfast sandwich? What does it consist of? Yeah, my favorite breakfast sandwich is regular. <laughs> normal. Normal, which normal to him is sausage, egg, and cheese on yeah. a croissant yeah. or any type of bread. Okay, so now we're going to add in our stewed tomatoes and we're going to add in our tomato sauce. Well, that kind of looks like check, uh, ketchup. Yeah, well, ketchup is made of tomatoes. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got our tomato sauce and the recipe calls for oregano oh, and Italian seasoning. That's tomato sauce. Yeah. I don't have any oregano, but I do have Italian seasoning. Also, I never measure out seasonings, by the way. <laughs> so if you're a measurer, definitely measure them out. I just like to do pour enough until my soul says that's enough. And then the recipe says to put on low, cook for six to seven hours. I did not do this with that much time left, so I'm gonna put it on high for four hours. And then we'll pick back up when it's time to add in the other ingredients. So we will see yeah. you then. All right, we're right at the four hour mark. Everything's looking really good. So I just need to cook the noodles really fast. Okay, I got my water boiling, so I'm going to throw this in. Um, I did salt my water before that. It's the only time that you can actually season your pasta. So I'm throwing my bow tie pasta in. Give it a good stir. Okay, pasta's done. I always like to save some of the pasta water just in case. So I'm gonna reserve some of that now and then I'm gonna go drain the rest and then add it into our crock pot meal. cheeses. I'm going to add them on before I stir them in so they can stick to the noodles. I believe it was a cup of mozzarella and, you know, Parmesan. These are another thing that I just eyeball. And I'm going to stir it up. It smells good. And then you can always put more cheese on top, but it looks good. Okay, see all the cheese is melted really good. It looks really, really good. 
So I'm just gonna get some for the kids and then put more cheese on top. We like cheese in this house. Hi, you do. Do you want more than that? Yeah. Or is that good? Yeah. You want cheese, cheese on top? Sure, cheese. Cheese. Cheesy cheese. Parmesan and mozzarella. Yeah, mozzarella and cheese? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, mozzarella cheese. Yum. I, I think I like this. Cookie. Okay. All right, I we'll think try I it. Like we'll turn this around and try it on camera. Okay. So, um... We're back. <coughs> um, <sorry. laughs> All right, we're gonna try it. It looks yeah. really, really good. Yeah, it looks really, really good. It's really cheesy. Blow on it because it's hot. I just pulled it out. Lots of cheese in here, which is cheese? nice. Cheese is always a winner. The recipe does say that you should put spinach in it. If I do that, nobody will eat it. So we're gonna leave that one out for this recipe. I would put, I would put like, like that. Okay. Cheese. Cheese. Mm. Should I really? That's good. Good. You just ate cheese. <laughs> That's really good. Just like the um. It's like very warm, very cozy. Yeah. Right. When. When um the cheese came out, it was on our pizza cupcake video, <laughs> and then the cheese was hanging out just like like this one, right? Mm-hmm. I like this. Me too. Uh, Penny's not coming. It says it's a ravioli casserole. These are bow tie pasta, so I wonder if like the idea is because there's lots of cheese, there's ravioli in the cheese, yeah. there's cheese in the ravioli. Yeah. I don't know. I like it. It's really good. It's really good too. You like it? Yeah. Alright. Alright, so we should end it. Yeah, let me. So wait, wait, wait. You want to say thank you? Because this is the last one for this week. Thank you for watching this video. Tomorrow we're going to Ocean City after I'm going to school. We're going to get packed up and this is our last one. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Thumbs up.